Sweeping new traffic laws are in effect, so you'd better get ready to buckle up and put down that cell phone. We'll ask the Kampol how they'll be enforced. And BDF soldiers bracing for a pay cut, but the president of the PSU says those soldiers need to organize and fight for their livelihoods. Plus, we'll show you why the Hawksworth Bridge has to close down for six months. Also, we'll show you an apparently drunk driver's shocking accident on San Pedro. We've got details of these and other stories in our newscast for tonight, Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. Good evening. With your news, I'm Indira Crack. This newscast is brought to you by Cellular World, your authorized Samsung distributor. The April sale is now at Cellular World. Enjoy massive savings store-wide and take your luck when you get a chance to get cash back with our scratch and win tickets giveaway. Ask about our unbeatable low prices guaranteed with budget phones starting as low as $49. Android starter phones starting at an all-time low price of just $115. Redmi gaming phones starting at $359. Samsung A-Series lead offers starting at just $269. Fully backed up by one-year local warranty. Plus, the newly added ZTE, Infinix, Logic, and Techno Spark phones now available countrywide. But that's not all. We've got you covered with something for everyone. Kids tablets, smart TVs, speakers, headphones, and earbuds, gaming consoles, smart watches, accessories, and so much more. Visit any of our stores in Belize City, Delma Pan, San Pedro, and now in Orange Walk to start shopping today. Or shop with us via our virtual store through Facebook, Instagram, or WhatsApp at 615-5141. Don't miss out. We got the deal for you. The Easter break is over, and now it's time for the baddest Belize Hurricanes to make that playoff push to secure the number one seed throughout the playoffs. They're playing basketball. Uh, all around the we world. The uh, uh, <laughs> to the this Thursday night, the Belize Civic Center will not be the same when the free time and defending BEBL champion Benny's Belize Hurricanes battle against the rivalry brothers from the West. There's no love lost between these two storied franchises. It's the Wild West versus the Beast from the East. But you already know. I know the East is the best. All the propaganda that spread. Tongues will have to confess. Hurricanes is the poised and ready to launch two of the fans' favorite players, Belize and Nicholas. As Phillips, fresh off his college season, and the man himself, straight out of the Saudi Arabian League, Kirk Shaba Smith Jr. Shaba in there. The halftime show will feature the Category 5 girls, the big screen kiss cam, and dance off competitions to win fabulous prizes courtesy of Cellular World. Don't forget the $1,000 primary and high schoolers poster and battle competition and the Hamanasi Resort first five contest valued at $5,000. One team, one big family. Remember, bring out the entire family this Thursday night at the Belize Civic Center. Canes versus Western Balls. Gates open at 7 p.m. Tip off time is 9. Hurricanes are one big family. The after party at Thursday Thursday. Sponsors. But we not care, we are real winner. Family. Hurricanes are one big family. Yeah. These charter means aren't our navigating along the coast. This morning, the 2023. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Sheree Hustle, and here's what's ahead for you on Saturdays tonight. We've got details of these and other stories in our newscast for tonight. Good evening. With your news, I'm the Durkrat. Please, you're watching the Nation Station, Channel 7. Express is a service that allows you to perform financial transactions conveniently at your neighborhood stores countrywide. Enjoy the convenience of cash withdrawals, bill payments, credit card payments, top up, or transfer between your accounts. All you need is your Atlantic Bank Visa debit card along with an ID. Non Atlantic Bank customers can also enjoy the service by paying with cash. 
Atla Express is easy, convenient, secure, and near you. Get ready for the most anticipated event of the year, Miss Universe Belize 2024. On Saturday, April 13th, starting at 8 p.m. Tickets are exclusively available at smart showrooms countrywide. General admission starts at $25, reserve tickets at $50, and VIP tickets at $100. Get the Ultra VIP Package Experience for only $1,000. To secure your Ultra VIP tickets, simply email the Miss Universe Belize Foundation at mubelizeinfo at gmail.com. Remember, the dress code is formal cocktails, so dress to impress. Catch all the excitement of Miss Universe Belize 2024 streaming live exclusively on the national channel, and it's also available on Next Gen TV. The red carpet starts at 7.30 p.m., and the show starts at 8 p.m. Don't miss out on this unforgettable evening. It's so good, it's so good. San Ignacio. All the preparations have been made. It's time to enjoy the festivities. On April 12th and 13th, it's the grand opening of Quality Poultry Products Quality Food Supermarket and Chicken Express. Bring out the entire family for not one, but two fun-filled days. There will be Bouncy House, a mechanical bull, free food and drinks for purchases made, music, free games, and of course, discount on chicken. It's going to be crazy fun. How do you get there? Just drive on down to the corner of Branch Mouth and Joseph Andrew Drive and get in on the celebration. Mark your calendars, April 12th and 13th. Opening ceremonies start at 10 a.m. Quality poultry products. This stuff for wheat chicken. Wake up to positivity and inspiration. It's a fresh and diverse twist on your mornings. Tune in to Sun Up on 7 every weekday morning at 6.30 a.m. Right here on your nation station, Channel 7. It's the morning show you don't want to miss. Hey Belize, come join us at the Belize Earth Day at Creatively Green Pop-Up happening at the Memorial Park on Saturday, April 20th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Shop from a wide selection of eco-friendly boots, light, soul handmade clay jewelry, Hello Body Belize, Naturally Belize Cosmetics, Belize Eco Bag, Zero Belize, and so much more. Enjoy delectable food and beverages from Don Ceviche, Iguana Stop, Brain Freeze Margaritas, just to name a few. Live performances by QB and Band, Britney Star, and Yastalia. For more details, call us at 227-2420. The Belize Earth Day pop-up is brought to you by the Belize Tourism Board in partnership with the Belize City Council. Sponsors include DigiWallet, Coca-Cola, and the Belize Waste Control Limited. See you on April 20th at the Memorial Park. Every day, we access energy for cooling, lighting, and powering our electrical appliances and devices at work and at home. During cooler months, we rely less on cooling appliances such as fans and air conditioners. However, during warmer months, as the temperature and humidity rises, we use more energy to cool our spaces and our appliances and electrical devices work harder than they do during the rest of the year. When the months become hotter, let's all practice energy conservation. Here are a few changes that you can make to manage your energy use. Check that all appliances and electrical devices are working efficiently. Turn lights off when not in the room. Unplug chargers, appliances when not in use. Turn off fans and TVs. Use energy-saving light bulbs such as LEDs. And look for the Energy Star products when purchasing appliances and electrical devices. These easy changes can reduce energy use and costs. You can also monitor your energy use during the month by reading your meter and calculating the reading using BEL's bill calculator on our mobile app or by visiting our website. Let's all save energy. Belize, you're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7.
Driving without seat belts and driving while on your cell phone, they're both unsafe driving habits, but they're almost a Belizean way of life, even if they do cause countless accidents and traffic fatalities every year. Well, in December of 2023, new traffic laws were introduced to make all that illegal. Of course, we know it, it's Belize, and enforcement is always lax. Well, if not altogether absent. But this time may be different. A grace period was given for everyone to get up to speed with the new regs, but that ended in March of 2024. And now police, traffic and transport officers are enforcing the new laws. They require that all persons in a motor vehicle must wear seatbelts at all times and that drivers cannot be on their phones and must use a hands-free device while operating a motor vehicle. We spoke to the commissioner about how this is going to be enforced a short time ago. I think that regulation came into force the uh, 1st of March this year. Um, it certainly gives the police and the, the traffic wardens the authority in law to be able to issue violation tickets for any person who is found to be driving a motor vehicle, um, not wearing a seat belt, or um, persons who are on a cell phone while they're driving. So it is, it is a good thing. Um, I must say that many a times we see people committing these infractions. I myself do it at times, so um, I have to make the adjustment as well. Um, as you would know, I am a person who traverses the country a lot. And um, if I know I'm going somewhere that I will return home later than expected, I would not take my driver because he have to go home to his family. So I would normally drive myself. And uh, when I do drive myself, I still have to be paying attention to the phone. Um, messages are coming in, cars are coming in. So I have a, um, my vehicle, I, 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 when I connect it to the, um, to the, when I connect the phone to the vehicle, um, there is an uh, application on my phone that allows the phone to read the text. So that is good. And I also use the, um, the application where I can speak to the phone on the phone, write the text messages, and then just say send and it sends it. So there is there is that hands-free um, capability with the phone um, once connected to the vehicle. But it still is a distraction at times. And so um, again, it's just a matter for, for us to make that adjustment and make sure that we comply with the regulations. Um, in terms of the seatbelt, we, we know that there have been many instances where seatbelts do save lives. Um, we have had a number of traffic fatalities on our highways. And so it is important that um, drivers as well as passengers in, um, in vehicles wear the seatbelt. It is to save their own life should the need arise. Do you feel like these SIs should have been in place long before March, though in many other countries they already uh, look at things like these? Well, there had been the, SI, the, the law that dealt with the issue of seat belts, but I think the previous law addressed highways. Um, the new law addresses um, not only highways, but even if you're within um, city or town limits. And so that's a change in the, in the, um, in the regulation. Um, we can always look in hindsight and say that something could have been done long ago, but I don't think that it came too late. Um, it is still timely and uh, moving forward, it will save lives um, for sure. The fine for not wearing a seatbelt is $50, while those caught driving while operating a cell phone face a fine up to $500 and the possibility of six months imprisonment. Andre Paris returned to cabinet yesterday after an eight-month leave of absence. Paris had allegedly sent inappropriate texts to attorney Wendy Oxelou, who claims she has had to flee the country because she fears prosecution on her return. However, even though she accused him of a sexual assault, she did not make a police report. And today, the Minister of Human Development said that maybe Paris would have been better investigated if she did. I am not sure if it was a full-fledged investigation because, and, and I, had I had told myself I wouldn't speak much on this because it was the Prime Minister's decision. But I will, I will say at least this, a full-fledged investigation may have taken place had there been 
a formal police report or complaint. No such thing has ever happened. And I only take the opportunity further to say that I actually sit next to Minister Paris in cabinet and he's a hard-working colleague. And that is really as much as I will say right now. We know that the Attorney General was tasked to make an investigation, but Angzalu says no one from the government ever reached out to her to follow up on this. Tonight, BDF soldiers are getting ready for a pay cut that could come as early as May. As we have reported, an error was made in 2019, which put soldiers on the wrong pay scale, meaning they have been getting overpaid for five years. Correcting the error now means cutting these soldiers' paychecks. And for the enlisted soldiers who make up about 75% of the army, their salaries are already low, and now they could face a pay cut, which could bring them down even, even more, earning substantially less. The exact figures are currently being calculated, and soldiers are anxious and weighing their options. Some of them have been speaking to the president of the PSU, who we spoke with via Zoom this evening. He told us these soldiers have to fight to preserve their salaries. And so we're saying, if it is that you wanted to correct the BDF salaries because there was an anomaly um, of overpayment, then you should have made that, or you should make that correction across the public service. Don't target those who are already at the bottom of the barrel or, or, or at the bottom of the uh, bottom end of the pay scale. And that is our problem here in that they do not want to correct the anomaly that exists amongst the CEOs. They do not want to collect, correct the anomaly that exists where the heads of department are concerned or deputy heads of department in some cases. They do not wish to correct those, but they want to correct the salaries of the individuals who are laboring and who are ensuring and guaranteeing our safety and security. So we believe there is no equality in the manner in which the BDF soldiers are being treated. And we believe that the right thing that should have occurred or that should occur is that police officers and Coast Guard officers should be elevated to that anomaly where the BDF soldiers are because they are already grossly um, undercompensated for the quality and the kind of work and the number of hours that they're required to put in. And so it is for the BDF soldiers, especially those who stand to be affected significantly um, in as much as 30% as you would have suggested. It is for them to ensure that they organize themselves. And it is for them to decide if they will listen to the voices who will say to them, to, who will say to them that they cannot organize. They have a right to organize, to defend their livelihood. And organizing is different from unionizing. They can organize, they can take a stand against this, and it is up to them to do that in their best interest. Of course, we are far from calling for them to, 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 to engage in any coup or, 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 or anything, of, anything of that sort. However, you must organize, you must formulate your positions, and you must respectfully and professionally put that to the powers that be. And if it is that your livelihood is threatened, and if it is that the government will not protect that livelihood, because this is a bread and butter you should know, then it is for them to decide what next. We'll keep following the story. Golf cart accidents are common in San Pedro, especially at night. But footage we obtained today shows one golf cart driver nodding off in the driver's seat and driving his cart straight into a person riding a bicycle. It happened yesterday when the driver appeared to be drunk as he drove a northern San Pedro veering across the road. He eventually hit a cyclist who was on the far right of the road. The impact happened near the truck stop one mile north of the bridge. The person recording the incident from behind, another golf cart, quickly stopped to render aid. 
Upon approaching the accident, two persons could be seen lying on the ground on opposite sides of the cart, one of them with his wheel beneath the vehicle. According to witnesses, the driver was reportedly drunk and so he was arrested and charged for drunk driving. The victim didn't want to press charges. In other news from San Pedro about that dredging and land reclamation we showed you yesterday, well, it's all approved. Last night, the Chief Environmental Officer, Anthony Mai, told us that this is the same project we inquired about last year. He said it does have all required clearances. He could not confirm its compliance status. And we'll take a break now. When we come back, we'll show you what the Hawksworth has, why the Hawksworth had to be closed, has to be closed for six months, that is. And the government of Canada puts out a tourist travel advisory on Belize. The commissioner responds tonight. Here is how to be a part of Benny's home patient in three easy steps. First, download the B-Bucks app and sign up to be eligible. It's fast and easy. Then, shop at any Benny's location or Benny's entity. Remember to choose products from our monthly homecation jackpot categories to earn entries. Now you can earn B-Bucks with purchases made and be a part of the Benny's Homecation Jackpot for a chance to win the $10,000 grand prize in December. Win the ultimate homecation with Benny's quality and savings. Upcoming enhancements to my social security. The new healthcare provider feature seamlessly connects healthcare providers, insured persons, and employers to facilitate the payment of sickness benefits. Here are the enhancements. Registered healthcare providers will create and submit online medical certificates using their healthcare provider accounts. Insured persons will receive a link to view the medical certificate to complete and submit their sickness benefit claim. And employers will receive an email notification of their employee's sickness claim. Also, the insured person and their employer will receive a copy of the claim decision letter after review. Healthcare providers, insured persons and employers are encouraged to create a portal account to access and benefit from these new services on My Social Security at ssbportal.org.bz. My Social Security Online Portal. New healthcare provider feature coming this March. Social Security at your fingertips. Atla Express es un servicio que te permite realizar transacciones financieras cómodamente en comercios cerca de ti. Con Atla Express puedes retirar efectivo, realizar pagos de facturas y tarjeta de crédito, comprar recargas y transferir entre tus cuentas. Solo necesitas una identificación válida y tu tarjeta de débito visa de Atlantic Bank. Si no eres cliente de Atlantic Bank, Siempre puedes disfrutar de este servicio pagando en efectivo. Atla Express es fácil, conveniente, seguro y está cerca de ti. Wake up to positivity and inspiration. It's a fresh and diverse twist on your mornings. Tune in to Sun Up on 7 every weekday morning at 6.30 a.m. right here on your nation station, Channel 7. It's the morning show you don't want to miss. Take a minute. Imagine yourself in that long road trip in that dream vehicle. Right now, that dream may seem a bit far-fetched, but with real deal auto sales, that dream can be realized. We not only have quality and reliable vehicles, but affordable vehicles. Did someone say layaway? Yes! Call us today. 613-1889 to ask about our layaway plans or visit us at 2736 Hummingbird Highway, Belmopan, right across from the showgrounds. Be a boss with Real Deal Auto Sales. Daddy, Daddy, buy me one Carol Consumer. It's a sound, it's a sound. 
You want egg? Uh -uh. Oh, you want coral consomme. Aha! Uh -huh. Coral consomme. The best taste and the best price. Less fat, more flavor. Taste the savings. Love the flavor. Available at your favorite supermarkets near you. These charter means aren't We're navigating along the coast. This morning, the 2023. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Shirley Kalsil, and here's what's ahead for you on Saturdays tonight. We've got details of these and other stories in our newscast for tonight. Good evening. With your news, I'm a bureaucrat. Please, you're watching the Nation Station, Channel 7. Nando's Wholesale is the distributor for the full line of Badia spices, including the original complete seasoning. The perfect combination of ingredients and spices prepared to enhance the natural flavor of your favorite foods. Also, cinnamon powder for all your desserts, fruits and beverages, and as special dishes. All these are available in commercial sizes or restaurant packaging. Nando's products are available at your local retailer or contact us at 222-5000. From Corzal to Toledo, Nando's is proud to be serving Belize as its number one wholesale distributor for over 35 years. One million sixty-seven thousand seven hundred slices of bacon are eaten by tourists each year, stimulating our local economy. Tourism means business. Please, you're watching the Nation Station, Channel Seven. The Hawksworth Bridge in Cayo is going to be closed for six months. The Ministry of Infrastructure Development and Housing made the announcement this morning that the bridge will close on Thursday, the 2nd of May of 2024 and reopen 2nd November of 2024. That's a six-month closure, the longest we can recall for the 75-year-old bridge. We asked the Chief Engineer about it via Zoom. We have some um critical works that we need to undertake on the Hawksworth bridge and so those works we expect will take us about six months for us to complete and because we would need to have workmen and workers on the structure during the day when we're doing these works um, it is best that we close the structure um, for this period from what we've reviewed from the inspections that have been carried out um, we have to do some repairs to the suspension cables. Those are the two cables that, that carry the structure. We also have to do some repairs to the primary and secondary girders on that bridge. We also have to do some repairs to the deck section, which is the mess section that you drive on. Um, I think you could recall that if you drive across it, you would hear some rattling. Um, that's because we have to tighten up some bolts that are there on the deck section. We also have critical work to do on the pedestrian footpath that is there. And so because these works have been long overdue, the ministry saw it best for us to immediately try and execute these routine and periodic maintenance of the structure in an effort um, of safety. And so the idea is that we have engaged a consultant, um, Kayo Steel Limited, for them to execute these works on our behalf. Should persons using the bridge right now be concerned for its structural integrity and the safety of traversing it? No, at this point in time, we don't think it is that critical that motorists should be concerned um, because the bridge already has restricted loading on the structure itself. Originally, the bridge was designed to carry a load of uh, 26,000 pounds per, um, per vehicle. And so that has already been restricted and lowered. I think at this point in time, it's about 10,000 pounds. And so, for what we have traversing the bridge at this time, it is still safe, but because of the structural nature of that structure, we thought it was important for us to implement this as soon as possible. The bridge was constructed in nine, was completed in 1949. 
And so to 2024, that's approximately 75 years. Um, with the remedial works that we'll be doing on the structure, definitely we will be able to extend the design life of the bridge. However, that, that will have to be maintained as time goes by um, in terms of its structural integrity. The Hawksworth Bridge definitely, I think, with the repairs that we're going to undertake, it should be able to give us maybe another 25 years with maintenance, of course. The Hawksworth Bridge was imported from England in 1949 and is named after former Governor Gerald Hawksworth. And while the Hawksworth can still be repaired, the Balkan and Swing Bridges in Belize City both need replacement. We discuss the dire condition of those bridges with the engineer. When you look at the Belkan and the Belize City Swing Bridge, they're two different structures. And as you mentioned, they are exposed to the element, especially the salt air. And for the Belize City Swing Bridge itself, that has been... Um, reduce in terms of its structural capacity because of the the corroding of the steel structure that is there so basically that is just one massive steel structure resting on two abutments and a turntable and so that structure itself because of the salt air has eroded over time and this definitely needs to be changed when you look at the belkan bridge now it's a slightly different structure because that is basically a girder bridge um, whereby you have a turntable in the middle and you also have two intermediate pairs. Now, what has happened with Belkan is that the pairs itself are the ones that are collapsing. And so, yes, it's critical for the ministry to replace that bridge um, much more than the works that we're doing on the Hawksworth because of its structural um, integrity. And so we wouldn't want anything to collide as what has happened um, in Baltimore into those piers because they are already fractured. I mean, you could see it from the inspections that the ministry did um, last year. And um, we don't want to put the structure at risk. We know that we don't have any big, heavy vessels traversing that area, but definitely um, it is our opinion that we need to replace the Belkan Bridge as soon as we can. The government of Japan has already approved funds for the swing bridge, while the MIDH is awaiting approval from the Ministry of Finance to proceed with replacing the Balkan. And Canada, the country that gifted Belize that bridge in 1969, is tonight issuing a warning. Not about the danger of the bridge, but about the security situation here in Belize. On March 28, the Canadian government updated its travel advisory for Belize warning Canadians to exercise a high degree of caution when traveling to Belize. They say this is due to the level of crime in the country. It also advises travelers to avoid non-essential travel to the south side of the city because of gang and drug-related violence. It also informs them that there is a state of emergency over certain areas of the south side and the Cayo district and points out that other frequent violent incidents include home invasions, muggings and sexual assault. Today, the commissioner of police said he felt the warning was unreasonable, especially since gang-related murders and other major crimes have been down. He feels the Canadian government may be watching too much of the Monday morning beef. Can I blame Jews Vasquez for that? <laughs> Maybe they, they listened to Jews on the beef on Monday and they got scared. I, I don't know, right? <laughs> but... Um... I have to put one for Jews, right? <laughs> um, but I, I really and truly don't understand why the um, advisory. Um, Belize is still basically a peaceful place. We, we don't have instances where persons are being killed randomly or um, persons running loose on the streets and uh, killing people. Um, as we have said, and as the stats um, shows, that most of the killings we have had this year are domestic related, um, where we're seeing that the, the ex-boyfriend of a woman is killing the current boyfriend. And the second most um, killing is alcohol related um, killings. In terms of gang killings, those are done. Uh, and so it is, I, I found it very strange that um, 
that advisory came out. And I, I, I think that when um, a country declares a state of emergency, it, it makes the place more safer. It won't make it more dangerous. Um, let's look at Salvador, for instance. Um, with all that is taking place there, it is tantamount to a state of emergency. It has become somewhat of a police state. And uh, when you um, speak to people, um, tourists who go to Salvador, they will tell you that they, they feel much safer there now than before they had this state, um, what I would refer to as a, um, as a um, police state. So the actions that the government took in declaring a state of emergency on Southside Belize City uh, does not make Southside dangerous, it makes it much safer. And so we, we do encourage people to traverse um, the Southside and the entire country of Belize because the country is safe. When we look um, out district, the performance is exceptional. Even, come, even though last year was, was an exceptional year, um, the other districts are down compared to last year. And not just districts, but even when you talk about the region, the southern region is down, the western region is down, the, um, the northern region is down. And the only reason eastern division is up is because of rural Belize. Um, uh, we have had 10 murders in rural Belize this year, and that is what is basically um, eating at the numbers for eastern division. Uh, and so I, I, I don't think that the, the, um, the notice is a reasonable one, but I guess the, the Canadians do have their reasons um, why um, they did that. Yesterday, you heard from the families of the two men who were charged for the murder of PC Dylan Anthony. They say they know their loved ones are innocent of the murder. In the case of 29-year-old Hugh Middleton, he had been released from prison less than a week before he was picked up again under the SOE. For 19-year-old Marlon Gideon, his mother says she knows her son is a known thief, but not a murderer. The compo says she might not know her son as well as she thought, since he has given a partial confession. My late grandfather used to always say, a thief is a murderer. Right? Um, I don't know where he got that from, but that was one of the things he, uh, he always taught us when we were growing up. Um, I watched the interview with the, the mother last night, and all I could say is, wow. Um, it's amazing to see how a mother would go to that extent um, to try and defend something which she knows is not true. Um, but again, it's a matter, right? Uh, Celine Dion says that there is no greater love than the love of a mother, right? And uh, she's right. Um, and so I can say that we have done our investigation. And uh, if you, even before we made the arrest, um, if you were to go and speak to people in Ruin Creek, they would tell you exactly who committed that murder as well. And so we have absolutely no doubt that we have the right players in custody. Um, I guess what the mother don't know, and if she do know she's covering, is that her son, to some extent, confessed to being a part of it. Um, so I sympathize with her as a mother. Um, but at times when our children do wrong, we must allow them to face the consequences because that's the only way they're going to learn. Don't be like the mother that um, continuously condone the wrongful act of your children. And uh, when the time comes that they get killed, then you have to sit back and think and say, I should have. Um, I think that she still have an opportunity. Her son is alive, he's in prison. He will have his day in court and whatever the outcome may be, she is still going to have a son alive. The, the mother of um, PC Anthony cannot say the same. So there is still a chance for her to help her son to do right. And to all the people on social media who are um, to some extent glorifying what the mother is saying, um, I say that's why our society is the way it is today. Because we 
are always open to listen to foolishness and believe it. On March 28th, we brought you the story of a young woman from St. Bite who was trying to escape a violent situation with her ex-boyfriend. Mere months after they began dating, he began assaulting her. She took out a restraining order, but he has broken it multiple times, has allegedly committed arson on her former apartment in Silkgrass, and most recently crashed his vehicle into hers and attacked her inside her yard. But though he has been in court three times, he was given bail each time. And now the young woman daily fares for her life. We asked the Kumpal about it today and he said this time the fault is with the judicial system and the magistrate who has not revoked his bail. I hate to speak of the judiciary because when I do so I get in trouble. <laughs> um, but sometimes it is, it is good to, to be honest and, um, and be real about situations. And uh, I always believe that if you get into trouble for the right reasons of speaking the truth, then it's a trouble worth getting into. Um, I believe that as a police officer and uh, more so as a commissioner of police, I, I owe a duty to the people of this country to keep them safe. And uh, when I look at the, the situation involving um, Miss it, it, it troubles me, um, especially in the, um, these times where, as I said earlier, um, majority of the killings we have had um, are cases where ex-boyfriends are killing current boyfriends. So there is a degree of, of jealousy or obsession on the part of these ex-boyfriends. And to see that this young lady have had three almost death encounters, encounters with this young man, and uh, he still goes to court and walks out of court the same day, being granted bail. It does not speak well to our judicial system. Um, it, it would beg one to, one to wonder, what is the court waiting for? Um, is it that they're waiting for the young man to kill the young lady um, before something is done? And um, let me not say that it's the fault of the judiciary, because I, I am sure that other magistrates um, would have looked at the matter differently. Uh, and so it is something that we, we, we cannot be insensitive about as a society. Um, when we see that a person have had three almost death encounter with a particular person over two months period, it is time for us to take serious actions. And um, I, I wish that the court had not granted the young man bail um, because on top of this, he, after the first encounter, a restraining order was given and he breached the restraining order twice. So still go after the young lady. And again, on the last occasion, um, he crashed his car into the young lady car, driving her car into a fence, causing the airbag to deflate in her face, causing her injuries. She, she ran out of the vehicle to to save her life because she was in, in fear. And um, he pursued her, caught up with her, had her on the ground. And according to her in her statement, um, he was over her with a, with a cement block and was about to bring it down on her head um, when a person came and intervened. And uh, he eventually um, dropped the blocks. And she managed to run again. And her father came out and fired a shot. And that was what dissuaded him from per continuing to pursue her. What more do we need? Two more criminal charges were recently added to those alleged abuser already faces. And the Minister of Human Development shared the sentiment that in this case, the system has failed the young woman. She stated that the methods of interventions to protect women in abusive situations needs to be strengthened. I, I don't want to cast blame on any individual or any entity, but I would have to acknowledge that that sounds like a failure of the system. So we have to improve the system that the interventions and the responses to somebody going through that kind of thing will be more vigorous. 
because I think that there is a case, I don't know the outcome of it yet, but there is a case before the Caribbean Court of Justice from Trinidad in which a young woman, again a similar circumstance, bringing to the attention of the police two, three, four times of somebody breaking a restraining order. And I think the case actually went to court. Was it a failure of the government and the entire system? I don't know the outcome of the case, but I will look it up. But really what I want to say is that we have to um, tighten up and we have to really straighten up um, the interventions to assist women in that kind of situation. But I want you to know that the National Women's Commission is now a statutory body. Um, we have um, good programs and outreach where that is concerned. We have our committed commissioners who, by the way, are volunteer workers. They don't get paid. And we also have our Women and Family Support Department and we have all our various partners. So I think it is a matter of strengthening our systems and our responses. Back in March, we told you that the new director of Indigenous Peoples Affairs was Minister Oscar's Rikenya's brother. He replaced Greg Chuck, whose contract was not renewed after three years. Today, Minister Dolores Balaramas Garcia explained that they decided to appoint a director as opposed to another commissioner. However, is Gustavo Rikenya a Nepo brother? Minister Balaramas Garcia explained that despite his relation to her cabinet colleague, Rekenya applied to the post just like any other applicant and has the required experience. Let me clarify, we no longer have a commissioner for Indigenous Peoples Affairs. We won't be using that nomenclature anymore, you know. Um, we've appointed a director, um, which we feel it's best to, to have a director as opposed to a commissioner, you know. And the, the director is the person of Mr. Gustavo Rekenya. He happens to be the brother of Minister Roscoe Rekena. But I can say categorically that Mr. Rekena was not hired because he's the minister's brother. He interviewed, he applied, he has vast experience in community work, having worked as a teacher at the Julian Cho Technical High. And also he was an outreach officer at the Yachche um, Conservation Organization. We are very pleased because he, he made his application, he comes qualified, he's committed, and, and he has really hit the ground running in terms of our work in the South at the Office of Indigenous Peoples Affairs. So let me take this opportunity to dispel whatever notion there might be um, that there was any nepotism or any, any such thing. Belize is small. Belize is very small. And so we have to go with the talent that we see there, with the experience, and with what an individual brings to the table. So I have to say that so far, we are pleased with Mr. Rekena, and we will continue our work. However, the Belize Indigenous Alliance for Collective Resilience isn't buying that. The same day the appointment was announced, they issued a release stating, quote, while we acknowledge Mr. Rekena's connection to indigenous communities, we cannot overlook the glaring issue of nepotism that surrounds this appointment. Mr. Rekenya's familial ties to the area representative for Toledo West, a government minister, raises serious questions about the fairness and the integrity of his capacity to direct the indigenous people's affairs mandate, given his comments on record that questions his impartiality. End quote. The Toledo Alcalde Association had also issued a release stating, quote, the government has once again failed to prove to the Maya people of Southern Belize that it can be trusted with its commitment to respect and protect the Maya land rights by appointing Mr. Gustavo Rekenya. His appointment, particularly in the absence of any consultation with Belize's indigenous people's representatives, the Maya communities and their representatives, coupled with his direct familial relationship to the area representative of Toledo West, Minister Oscar Ray Kenya, is a total failure in building trust on this government. End quote. And now Ray Kenya will have to be a part of consultation with the Maya and non-Maya communities, even while the Mayas have expressed their dissatisfaction and concern with his appointment. Meanwhile, the non-Mayas weren't happy with Greg Chuck, who they believe was biased. 
It's potentially a roadblock in an already long and arduous process. But today the minister said that the government isn't looking to please everyone. The Mayas already rejected the draft proposal, but Balderamas Garcia reiterated again they cannot take the entirety of Toledo. Our senior counsel, Mr. Marshalek, along with um, Samantha Matut, the Assistant Solicitor General, we have gone back and looked at the gender policy and made a few adjustments in terms of what is being proposed. Because if you will recall, um, some of the Maya communities and leaders were saying that they didn't like the Section 5, which, you, which gives you, to begin with, a concentric circle of a kilometer or two or three kilometers going out in terms of radius. They weren't too happy with that. But I believe that there was a misconception there. We were not saying to the Maya communities, this is all the land that you're going to get. What we were saying is that is your starting point without you having to prove use and occupation. You see? Now, if you want to go further than the three kilometers radius, which is actually six kilometers in diameter, then you have to prove use and occupation. Because you see, the government is not on one side or the other side. The government has to be an arbiter and the government has to ensure fairness and responsibility to all the people of Belize, not just the Maya people. And because we have said that the Maya people, as much respect as we have for every indigenous person and group and every Belizean, the Maya people would not be able to own the whole of the Toledo district. So government has to be an arbiter and to place certain limits. Now, one of the um, proposals in the policy is that if you wish to claim as communal land more than the two or three kilometers radius, then you would have to prove use and occupation for at least 30 years. You say, no, some of them don't want to hear that. Some of them don't want to hear that. But unfortunately, the government is not in a position to please only one person or a set of people. We have to create a balancing act. And I can tell you that Mr. Rekena will be reaching out to the non-Maya communities as well. Jacintoville, Yemery Grove, you know, Barranco. These are areas um, that, we ha that we really have to look at, you know. So I am pleased. We are waiting to hear from the legal advisor for the MLA uh, grouping by the end of April, and then we will be reporting back to the Caribbean Court of Justice. And Balderamas Garcia's ministry is also working on revising the national gender policy. The policy points out glaring issues in the system, especially as it relates to gender-based violence, such as limited shelters and lack of resources for the DVU at the police department. The minister said that as they continue to work with their partners, progress will be made. I think it, come, it will come, the improvement will come with collaboration. Um, the policy really assists us in terms of the direction we want to go. And because we have given such an important role to fighting against and combating um, uh, gender-based violence, then um, what we have to do is to work much more with partnerships. So the policy will inform the actions that will be taken. And thank you for raising the issue that the domestic violence unit at the police is understaffed. We will certainly be having discussions with the minister and the commissioner of police to see if we could provide um, more assistance there. I do know that there have been many good interventions. Even though in March we had some very, very sad and very tragic um, occurrences, as we all know, you know, we had two murder suicides um, and then we had other other things that have happened, that there are other incidents, you know, a high level officer of the BDF being accused of severe um, domestic violence. The message that we have to send is that it, there will be zero tolerance. And yes, we need more facilities of, um, of shelters for people seeking help. And the minister today was in her constituency visiting the Gales Point Government School. The small school has been educating the children of the tiny village for over 15 years. And today they finally broke ground for a new preschool. Courtney Menzies was there this morning and has this story. Gales Point Government School hosts about 95 children from preschool to standard 6. 
but many of the students are forced to share classrooms. But by the time school reopens after the Christmas break in December, the youngest students will have a brand new preschool, and the primary school will see much needed renovations, and the new school will see plenty of new facilities. We are hoping and we're very confident that by December the Christmas present will be the fully refurbished primary school and the brand new uh, preschool with disability access, a ramp, with shower, with kitchen, it will double as a hurricane shelter. And like I say, the, um, the amenities that Mr. Tone described, like um, toys for the children, amenities, fans, and, and new, brand new electrical for the preschool and brand new, sorry, for the primary school, and the new roof and all the amenities, I think it will be a wonderful, wonderful um, Christmas present if it can finish by the end of this year. I'm very excited. I've been here for the past 15 years and they're having any renovation done to this government school. So I'm very excited to see we're getting a new preschool. We're getting our government school re renovated. And I think it's wonderful. In the past, we had the dilapidated at the first preschool animal. We have insect with the teacher and student within the building. Then we didn't have our own private bathroom, but now it will be, and we will have everything we deserve as a teacher and students here at Gisborne Government School. I don't even think you could put like a how important it is. It is like the important thing to do because like we all know foundation is, you got to build on foundation and this is education, preschool. That's the very beginning. So the fact that enough people saw that this village is worthy of focused education on the young in a growing community, that's just, that's priceless because we didn't have to fight too hard for that other than stay up and say, yes, we want it, yes, we want it, yes, we need it. And the villagers are hoping that this expansion will lead to more students. We would like for children from other communities to come here. For example, um, Mullins River, Hope Creek, maybe Sarawi, and even from Dangriga, because some of the teachers um, are from um, those areas and the bus comes in every day. But it is important for us to provide the top quality education for our children um, in this community, it being a rural community, you know. But the principal of the school is hoping that the expansion won't just end with a preschool. We have multi-grade and mono-grade. It's not all multi because we have the infant one and two class together. We have the standard one and two together. Then we have standard three, four, five and six separate. No, that, that will continue even with the new infrastructure. Yes, that will continue because the um, infrastructure is only for the preschool. Are you hoping though that maybe the primary school could one day get more classrooms so everybody could have their own classroom? Yes, that would be very great. And I am also a teaching principal, so it would be good if I could only be an administrator or a teacher. Yeah. Because you know the struggle and the work we have to face with doing both. But it would be good if we could get more teacher so we can have... Uh, um, a classroom for each grade. But Samuel Andrew will have to wait and see, since the preschool has been five years in the making, two of which were due to the pandemic. However, other areas of the village are also seeing major developments. Courtney Menzies, 7 News. And we'll take a break now. When we come back, we'll tell you who are the finalists in the second year of the prize for investigative journalism and We'll tell you about an educational program called Rachel that's being rolled out to rural schools. Don't go away. This newscast is brought to you by Cellular World, your authorized Samsung distributor. Skip the trip to the bank and perform cash withdrawals at your neighborhood store with Atla Express. Withdrawals are now free, and customers can withdraw up to $300 daily. All you need is your Atlantic Bank Visa debit card along with an ID. Atla Express is easy, convenient, secure, and near you. Atlantic Bank, building the future together. The Easter break is over, and now it's Time for the Banish Belize Hurricanes to make that playoff push to secure the number one seed throughout the playoffs. They're playing basketball. Uh, all around the we world. Are the best uh, 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 to the this Thursday night, 
the Belize Civic Center will not be the same when the three time and defending BEBL champion Benny's Belize Hurricanes buckle against their rivalry brothers from the West. There's no love lost between these two storied franchises. It's the Wild West versus the Beast from the East. But you already know. I know the East is the best. All the propaganda and spread. Tongues will have to confess. Hurricanes is the poised and ready to launch two of the fans' favorite players, Belize and Nicholas Phillips. Fresh off his college season and the man himself, straight out of the Saudi Arabian League, Kirk Shabba Smith Jr. Shabba. The halftime show will feature the category five girls, the big screen kiss cam, and dance off competitions to win fabulous prizes courtesy of Selling the World. Don't forget the thousand dollar primary and high schoolers poster and battle competition and the Havanassi Resort first five contest valued at five thousand dollars. One team, one big family. Remember, bring out the entire family this Thursday night at the Belize Civic Center. Canes versus Western Ballers. Gates open at 7 p.m. Tip of time is 9. Hurricanes are one big family. The after party at Thursday Thursdays. Sponsors. But we not care, we are real winner. Family. Hurricanes are one big family. Yeah. These charter means aren't We're navigating plane. along the coast. This by morning, the, the 2023. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Sheree Kalfil, and here is what's ahead for you on Southern News tonight. We've got details of these and other stories in our newscast for tonight. Good evening. With your news, I'm Andrew Craig. Please, you're watching the Nation Station, Channel 7. Thirteen million eight hundred thirty-five thousand seven hundred eggs are eaten by tourists each year, fueling our thriving economy. Tourism means business. Wake up to positivity and inspiration. It's a fresh and diverse twist on your mornings. Tune in to Sun Up on 7 every weekday morning at 6.30 a.m. Right here on your nation station, Channel 7. It's the morning show you don't want to miss.
Please, you're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7. The finalists for the 2022 Investigative Journalism Prize have been named and once again, 7 News has been shortlisted. Uh, there were 19 submissions, an increase from 12 in the first year. And from those 19, three finalists were named today. They are Belize's Environmental Impact Assessments, End Insight by Andre Habet, Guns and Graft, Exposing the Licensing Racket by Jules Vasquez from 7 News, Narco Links, Suspected as Cattle Ranching Threatens Belize's Rainforests by Hippolito Novello for News 5. The winning entry will be revealed on May 4th at the Government House in Belize City where the top finisher will walk away with $10,000 while the other two will receive $5,000 each. A year after they first piloted the project at Kobe Foundation, the Rotary Club is expanding their work to enhance basic education and literacy in schools. RACHEL, which stands for Remote Area Community Hotspot for Education and Learning, has now made its way to rural schools where students will be able to take advantage of its features and digital content without the need for Wi-Fi. Joe Marie Lanza found out more about it today. When we first heard about Rachel, it was a learning program implemented at the Belize Central Prison as a literacy tool. The pilot project received such positive feedback from the institution that it has successfully been deployed in a number of schools in rural areas with little to no access to the internet. The Rotary president told us how they managed to expand to 11 schools. So Rachel is a really, it's a combination of literacy, education and technology. In essence, the Rachel is actually a little device. And it's like a hotspot. So it's a device that you can load up curriculums, you can load up applications, you can load up any sort of programs that can add to the curriculum or add to the educational experience of, of, a, of a school. So principals, teachers, students get the opportunity to have access to these devices. And it's, a, it's amazing because Rachel Program is actually a non-profit organization. So they continually update the programs and the applications that they have access to. Give you a good example. There are programs that allow you to learn how to build a robot. There are programs that allow you to be able to learn how to code. So it's not necessarily only math and English and literature, it's very wide reaching. And what we're hoping to do with these programs is to give schools and schools that may not have consistent internet access, right? We're lucky in the city to some extent where kids might have a little bit more access, but in the rural areas in particular, there is a landline and a connection that will connect, for instance, that principal or connect a small number of of computers but in this case that Rachel device can be loaded up over the internet and then it allows for 50 young 50 kids on Chromebooks on tablets on computers to then get access to whatever is available on that device and it's controlled right it can be in line with curriculums so it's a tool for education and literacy etc the project is valued at two hundred and ten thousand dollars and functions without the internet Rotary Club member Glenn Brown says that it was the Rotary Club which first took note of the potential the program had to change lives within the education system in Belize. So the idea from for Rachel actually originated in Belize with the Rotary Club of uh, Belize. And they were looking around at, at, at different needs to support education and literacy in in Belize including in the in the prison where inmates obviously don't have internet access and the uh, the nature of the Belize or of the Rachel device is that's an offline internet server so it brings a wealth of internet content and educational programming onto a server that can be accessed locally by any Wi-Fi device but doesn't have contact with the internet it also works well in schools that either don't have internet access or have limited access to the internet um, or other technologies in the classroom. It, it, it helps to support that. 
And so it was Rotarians in Belize who really saw that this had an application here in Belize. Two of the principals at the schools where Rachel is in full operation told us more about how this tool ties into the new competency-based curriculum being implemented by the Ministry of Education. There were 10, 11 selected schools um, through collaboration with the Ministry of Education and Rotary Club of Belize, and we were one of the schools that were selected to do this training. I strongly believe, I'm confident that the training, the program that they're introducing in this training will benefit our teachers and our students on a great level to enhance learning within the classroom. Um, the good thing about the, the program is that we are in rural schools, and most rural schools don't really have internet access and with this program we are not required to have internet access so um, within the, the, the program itself has a lot of resources that teachers can use in various subject areas and one of the things I like about it it's um, it has it caters to the needs of all level of students from babies up to high school well we were uh, invited by mr. Woods from Belize Rotary to be a part of this training for two days, which entails the um, Rachel program. Rachel is a program that consists of a wide variety of re educational resources that compacts with website that does not need the internet. So the students and teachers can access this information without the use of internet. But the good thing about this program, it coincides exactly with what the new curriculum that we are using is pushing for, for example, problem-based learning, whereby students can go on, the, um, on Rachel and access these materials on their own. It allows them to explore and come up with ideas to, on their own as just using the guidance of the teachers. Joe Marie Lanza, 7 News. At the 11 school set to begin using Rachel R. Lucky Strike Government Primary School, Belize Rural, St. Agnes Anglican Primary, Belize Rural, Crooked Tree Government Primary School, Belize Rural, Unity Presbyterian, Belize City, Salvation Army, Belize City, St. Luke Primary, Belize City, St. Ignatius, Belize City, St. John Anglican, Belize City, and Stella Maris School, Belize City. For Muslims, Ramadan ended yesterday, which means the end of fasting from sunrise to sunset. So, fittingly as per tradition, there is a feast at the end of it called Id Mubarak, which means blessed feast. Today, we paid a visit at the Masjid to learn more about the highlights of this celebration, but most importantly, why it is celebrated. Today, we are we call it in the Muslim world Eid, and Eid means a recurring happiness, something that comes over and over. And of course, in English, people call it like a celebration. And Muslims are following something that is in the Quran, where we say that Almighty God told us in the Quran that He had prescribed for us to fast as He had prescribed for people before Muslims. This means that Muslims believe that all the prophets that God sent, he used to tell Moses and Joshua and Daniel and Solomon and all these people that they should fast. So that we are not the first people fasting. And Muslim fast in the ninth month of the Muslim calendar. And that name of that month is called Ramadan. And in the Quran, it says that in the month of Ramadan, God had revealed to the prophet Muhammad the Holy Quran and so Muslims, we fast for 30 days. Before the sunrise, we would have a small meal. And when the sun set, we eat again. And during the day, we are stay away from food, water, and women. But the significance of the fast is not only to stay away from food. It's to stay away from bad speech, bad behavior, cursing, which should be done at all times, but in particular, Muslims are told that if you fast and you don't eat and you don't drink and you still have bad personality, bad behavior, then God doesn't accept the fast because it's not just to stay away from food and drink and still be um, not a conscientious or good person. So the fasting is to develop good character and good personality in Muslim. And at the end of the fast, because we are told that today is our day of happiness, 
we will eat, drink, and be merry. Not because tomorrow we will die. We hope that we will see another year. But we do eat, drink, and be merry today. So today Muslims are told they can't fast. A Muslim can fast anytime, but on this day, we are told no one should fast. And that's all we have for you on our newscast for tonight. Thanks for watching with your news. I'm Indira Craig. Remember, you can find a full transcript of the news at 7newsbelieves.com and see the streaming video on our Facebook or YouTube pages. Have a great evening and join me back here tomorrow at 6.